Well, hello there, friends. You know how I love chocolate. I just made this beautiful chocolate cheesecake with a dark Oreo crust and a chocolate ganache on top. Amazing. Remember, thumbs up if you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell. Stay tuned, friends. We're doing it right now together. Okay, friends, let me show you how easy it is to do. No prep, but it's worth it. I got a spring foam mold, and um, I'm gonna wrap it with um, uh, a parchment paper. And what I do is I close it, I put it here on my big sheet of paper, and I, put a pencil, I mark it with a pencil, and I got the perfect exact uh, uh, cover that will fit on the inside of my mold, okay? So it's important, and then I cut a little bit higher then, then, then the mold about one, one and a half inches because you'll see my cake is going to rise. All right, so I'm all ready to go. So I, I don't want to complicate the issue, but I'm going to spray with a little bit of nonstick spray. You're going to say, well, why do you spray if you're going to put paper on it? It's just that the paper sticks better. That's all, that's the only reason, friends. So what I do is I do this, and then I have another spray, you notice, because after I do this, I'm also, look, look at how it sticks, you see? And, and then the cool part of it is I'm going to also, so I open it up now, and I take it in here like this, and now I close it. And now it's nice and tight, you see? Now the paper is right in there. Now, the, uh, I have the other spray, which is Baker's Joy. It's, a, it's a, like a nonstick spray with flour. It makes it easy, friends. To, if you're going to bake, you should, pay, you should use one with a flour. They make it easier, okay? And then what I do is I spray... I spray a little bit on the inside because you'll see. You'll see what I'm going to do here, friends. I have a little piece of paper and it's a little bigger than I need. It's better to have extra than not enough. And let me, I want to make sure that I don't dance over the camera too much. And you see right there, friends? Now it sticks. Now it sticks. And now, very important now, we're going to spray the inside of the parchment paper. Trust me. This is no big deal to do, and, uh, and if you don't spray it, it's going to stick. Okay, so now the mold is ready to go. All right? All I have to do is clean my hands a little bit, and then I'm going to make the crust, okay? Very simple to make the crust, friends. Now, use whatever cookie you want. I happen to love the Oreo chocolate with chocolate cream on the inside. Use whatever makes you happy, but try to use the dark cookie. You'll see why. All right? Oh, oh, and I'm using hazelnut. It's a hazelnut crust. So I'm going to process the hazelnut first just a little bit. I'm going to give them a little head start. Boom. and Because uh, we want them to release a little oil. So now they got a good head start, and now I'm going to put the cookies. All right, I got, I'll give you the exact measurement, but that's about uh, two ounces of nuts and about 10 ounces of cookies. And then we're gonna put a little bit of the uh, melted butter. Let's just process this. And we're gonna make it, we don't want it to be too mushy. To, we wanna make it like wet sand, maybe a little wetter than wet sand. Let's see what we got. Okay, it's pretty dry now. And then we're gonna put the butter in there. Let's just do this. There you go. We're going to put it right in there, friends. This is about two ounces of butter. You can skip the butter if you want, but <laughs> I like it. So, let's see what we got. We want it to be like wet sand. A little bit more. Just a little bit more. Maybe we want to pulse it so we get rid of the on the side. Let's see what we got. Uh, it's still not wet sand, you see? It's still pretty dry, right? So, what we do, we process it. A little bit more, and what happened is the, um, the uh, hazelnut are going to release some of the oil, and, uh, and that's going to make it stick together, okay? It's very important. Let's see what we got here. I want it to be like sticking, and it's not sticking. So we got to process it just a little bit longer. And the, the, the nuts are not releasing enough oil right now. So let's see what we got here. Let's see what we have, friends. Okay, it's sticking. All right, I don't want it to be too, too buttery. <laughs> I got stuff everywhere. 
but I want it to be uh, sticking like wet sand, okay? So now we're gonna put it in the middle. Let's make sure we get it all. You see, we're gonna make sure we get it all. Mix it up nice. Put it all in there. Now we wanna, friends, we wanna be careful with our side. Not to put too much on the side of it. We wanna keep it clean. You see, we wanna keep it clean, friends. Otherwise, the side of your cakes are gonna be all messy. And, um, and you know, I like it, everything perfect. So now look, you put it in here like this, right? And what you do, you take it, keep the side clean now. If it's not too clean, you gotta keep it clean, right? And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this uh, pounder thing, pounder thing, <laughs> very technical thing for, name for it. I guess it's a meat pounder, right? And I go like this, take anything. You know, before I had one of those cool tools, I used a cup, measuring cup, a one cup measuring cup. All right, that's all I'm gonna do, friends. I'm gonna prepare the molds. I'm gonna get clean up all this, and I'm gonna get ready, and we're gonna make the cake together, all right? So, be back in a minute. Okay, friends, let's get going. I got the cream cheese in here, it's two pound of cream cheese. I took it out a few hours ago, it's still not very soft, so we're gonna beat it. We gotta really, really, really beat it, friends. It's gotta be nice and soft before we can incorporate the rest of the ingredients, okay? So I'm gonna beat it, and I'll come back when this is nice and soft. As you can see right now, it's not very soft, so I'll be back in a minute. Okay, friends, it's nice and soft. Do it a few minutes, and now we're gonna make the um, we're gonna make we're gonna start putting all the ingredients in it. Okay, so I got uh, four ounces of butter, and I'm gonna melt uh, four ounces of chocolates, and uh, I'm gonna melt them. The chocolate I got some beautiful 74% uh, 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 cocoa butter chocolate. Buy a good dark chocolate, and then we are going to add um, a little bit of vanilla. Just about a nice tablespoon, tablespoon and a half of, measure carefully, of Tahitian vanilla. I love Tahitian vanilla. And then a little salt. Just, you won't even know it's in there. You know, salt enhances the ingredient. I got this vanilla salt. It's, it's fabulous. It really is. It just gives it a, instead of just plain salt, it's wonderful, right? And then we're going to put um, a, a, a four tablespoon of cocoa powder. And that's going to help us contribute, bringing in a beautiful chocolate flavor but also, friends, it's gonna help us uh, get a little darker in color. Otherwise, with all that cream and uh, all that cream cheese and all that sour cream and all that, your cheesecake is gonna be too pale in color. The cocoa powder is really, really gonna contribute to a nice chocolate color, okay? So, it's still gonna be like a chocolate milk stuffing, but very simple so far, right? All right, gonna turn this off. It's nicely melted. We're gonna turn it off and then, uh, we're going to continue putting the ingredients in here. So we're going to put a uh, 16 ounces of sour cream in here. If you have ricotta cheese, you can also put ricotta cheese. I like to put ricotta cheese also, but you got to process the ricotta cheese first with a food processor so it's nice and smooth. Because ricotta cheese is good, but I just don't like the texture, so I process it with a food processor. All right, we're going to put this in there like this, and we're going to continue processing it in. And we're gonna go in there, and now we're gonna put the eggs. And we got um, uh, seven eggs. And when I put the eggs, my friend, whole eggs, I like to put in one or two at a time. And they incorporate better. One or two at a time, they incorporate much better, friends. You see, let them incorporate it. We're gonna put the sugar, we got a cup of sugar. Let it incorporate well. And one egg at a time, and it incorporates better. That's all. If you don't have time, put them all in once. They don't incorporate as well. That's all. Not that big of a deal. Nothing we do is a big deal. We're going to put a little orange zest. You know, I love orange and chocolate. We all have a thing, right? This is my thing. I love orange and chocolate. So you don't have to put it in if you don't want to. I hope I'm not doing it too high so the camera can see me. Remember, that's the right way to use the tool, the microplane grater. Don't use it the other way around. And you know what I'm talking about, right? When people do it the other way around, they go like this, and then you can't see where they're going. 
see right here, you can see where I'm going. I know all my regular subscribers said, okay, we know. You already told us a hundred times. But remember, I always try to repeat things because a lot of my new subscribers, we got like 2,000, 2,500 a day of new subscriber, friends. So I got to make sure they know because everybody on, on YouTube uses it the wrong way. They use it like this and then they have to check where they are. But if you do it this way, you already know. All right, I know you all know this, but um, some of them may not. All right, friends, I see I got some on my hands, so we're going to wipe it off. And we're going to finish putting ingredient-wise. Oh, hey, take it easy. Take it easy. We'll put a little Kalua in there. You put Grand Marnier. I put a little Kalua. But a couple ounces would be good. That was about four ounces, so there you go. Maybe the Kalua is good. And now... We're gonna put our chocolate, friends. And let me make sure. I hope I can, you guys can see what I'm doing here. Is that okay, the camera right there like that? You can see it? Okay. Here it is. That's our last ingredient that we put in. And that's gonna bring us the color I was telling you about, you see? So let me stop this guy. Let me lift it. So, and then I can do a final mix of everything, you see? So then I don't lose anything in here, friends. It smells amazing. <laughs> the Kalua gives it, and the orange zest. Amazing, the zest of an orange. How much more flavor you get than if you put the whole orange in there. It really is, it's just amazing to me. You know, I've been doing this my whole life. You would think I don't get amazed anymore. Every time I do something, I'm like, oh, water smell is amazing. So look, take it off, clean up a bowl. We're gonna check at the bottom to make sure it's well done. See, look. And I hope I have all my ingredient. <laughs> you know, I forget things sometimes. Sometimes people say every video you forget something. You know, it's not easy. To, uh, to do it when you have to do it on time with a camera going and everything. You got to try to deliver a video that is not. So now, let me bring it over here so you guys can see. It's easier for the camera. What I did here, friends, I got the mold as, you know, we did it earlier, right? And then I put a little bit of aluminum foil. I did one last night, so this is the same paper I used already. Same aluminum paper. I put it in like this, and I put it in just like this because I'm going to put the water. My secret of having a cheesecake that is perfect, never a crack in my cheesecake, is to put it in water bath. Now, they tell you mold, your mold is going to be leak-free. Well, I guess what? Well, I've tried it for 50 years to find a leak-free one. They're not leak-free. They store a little leak, so you know what I do? I do this just to protect me, and, 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 and then you put it here. Now, if you have a really, really leak-free mold, then you don't need to put the aluminum paper. I just think it's a second uh, um, extra precaution then it doesn't hurt you to do it, okay? So here we have it. We are now, we're gonna take this mold out of there. And of course, we're gonna make sure it's all well mixed. And not to be too messy, I'm gonna put a bowl <laughs> and the knee, and then we're gonna pour it in here, friends. And that's all, okay? I do, however, it's best for you guys, I hope. The camera doesn't, is not blocked. We're just gonna pour it in, that's all, friends. And that's it, and then we're gonna go in the oven. My oven is at 350 degrees. And this could take an hour and a half, an hour and 45 minutes, friends, so take your time. Hurry, make sure your oven is preheated, very important, then your oven be preheated. Now you can understand why the, uh, I have the pepper in there, right? because you can see the mold is full, 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 right? If I didn't put the paper, because that guy is gonna raise, that, that cake is gonna rise, right? And if I didn't have the paper in there, when it rises, it would be a mess. Extremely important that you spray the paper. As it rises, it, it doesn't stick to the paper, it doesn't stick to the mold, and that's why it doesn't create any cracks. It's very important. Little details, but the de you know, it's all in the detail. All right, friends, look. We're going to take the water, so 
I hope it's not too much of a mess on the stove, but hey, no big deal. You don't need that much water, just a little bit, couple of inches. Couple of inches is good, okay, friends? All right, this is it. I'm gonna put it in the oven. Uh, about an hour and a half, uh, an hour and a half, an hour, 45 minutes. You want to make sure the center is not jiggly anymore. Get rid of this air bubble right there. You don't want air bubble right there. You don't want them. So be gentle so you don't have any air bubbles, okay? See, if you see them a little bit, get rid of them. Because they pop and they become whole. Big holes. We don't want them. All right, I should have been a little more gentle so you didn't have any air bubbles. I don't want air bubbles. All right, friends. We'll take it out of the oven, and we're going to finish it up together. It's going to take a little while, so what we're going to do, we're going to take it out of the oven. We're going to let it rest. It's best if you let it rest overnight, so that's the cake you got to make before. And then we're going to show you how to hand mold and then how to make it pretty, all right? So we'll be back when it's out of the oven, stayed in the refrigerator overnight, so I'll be back tomorrow. i see you guys tomorrow, and uh, we're going to take it out of the morning. I'm going to show you how to do it nice, all right? Be back um, tomorrow. Okay, friends, so remember, we bake them, and we wait the next day. So they've been in the fridge all night. So now, they, because I made two. <laughs> one for me, one for you. All right, friends, so we got the paper in there, right? And now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to uh, uh, release this guy right there. And you see how easy it is to take him out of there. For I wanted to show you that because it's an important uh, a, a technique that I want to show you, how do you unmold it? How do you take it out of there in an easy way, friends? I'm going to show you. All right, so now what we do, we'll take a sticky plate or a piece of cardboard. Those are cardboard cakes uh, thing. And then what I do is I take it like this and I flip it. All right, so I can put it down. So now, hopefully this will come easy. Yeah, and it got the paper with it, so I didn't have to pull the paper off. See, it's right there. And my paper is right there, friends. See, right there. I'm done. All right, so now I got to flip it back on the other side. So now I go like this. I put my plate, large enough of a plate, right? And then I slide it, and boom. Voila, and we take this out very easy. Okay, so now I'm going to make, I made a glaze. And I will give you the recipe, and it, it'll be written underneath. You know, when you click under the recipe, click more. It's a ganache. It's a chocolate ganache. Melted chocolate with cream, and I put a bunch of ingredients in there. I'll give you the recipe underneath. It's really, really simple to do, friends. You'll see, I put a little jet in in there to give it a little shine in there. Uh, and um, you'll see, I'll give you the whole recipe. It's not that complicated to do. The secret, though, is to keep it at the right temperature. If you keep it in the fridge too long, it will congeal, which we want it to congeal, obviously, when, when, when the cake is ready to go. If it's too liquid, it's going to run all over the place. So you can certainly cover the whole cake, put it on the screen, cover the whole cake. I'm just going to put some on the top. And then I'm going to decorate it, all right? This is the way I do it. You can do it however you want. See, look, the ganache, friends, is liquid, all right? So now we're going to pour right on it, but we're going to stay on top. We're going to try to be clean and stay on top of it, okay? So we're going to go on top. That's what we're going to do. We're going to stay right there on top. And... So you have to be careful because it's going to, as it gets comfortable, <laughs> hold on, I got to get a spatula. I always forget to get a tool. There's a tool. There's a tool for everything. And I like to put just a little bit, just all the way to the side, and then I'll decorate. This is an easy way to do it, friends. Very easy way for you to do it. You see? You see? Now remember, this is a ganache. So a ganache will um, will still be somewhat soft. We want it to be somewhat soft, you see? Somewhat soft, you see? We don't want it to be like when we dry it, when, uh, when it's cold, to be too hard. So you don't want to just do melted chocolate here, friends. That's why you do a ganache. You see, and a ganache will stay uh, soft, It'll never become hard. If you just do plain chocolate, 
it, it's going to crack on you. You don't want it to crack, you see? And you see when I cut it, it's going to look beautiful. So now all you want to do, you want to maybe put just a little bit more in the middle because you know you're good on the edge. You see? You just want to put a little bit more on the edge. I mean, in the middle. The edge, you stay away from the edge, otherwise it's going to start dripping. And I mean, if you can, you can that's a look you, you'll be okay to do too, you see? And now, what we're going to do, friends, let me put this right here. We're just going to shake it to make it as smooth as possible, right? And then I'm going to put it in the fridge so it will, and I'm going to make sure it's, you don't want to play with it too much because <laughs> more you play with it, and more you have to play with it. So we're going to let it get soft, a little softer so it's nice and smooth, and then we're going to finish decorating it, okay? So now, at this point, I want to refresh you with it a little bit because it's a little too soft. I want it to solidify somewhat, and then I'm going to continue decorating. So I go, I'm going to put it in the fridge, and then we'll finish it up, okay? Okay, friends. So I took it out, let it cool just a little bit, and now we're going to decorate it. I made a, um, a cream cheese and chocolate icing because, you know, whipped cream are temperamental. And they're not always easy to handle if you're going to make it in advance. This is perfect. Cream cheese. <laughs> cream cheese in the cake, right? So I just melted some chocolate in it. I put a little sweetener in there. I'll give you the recipe also. Remember, when you click on show more, you'll have the recipe for that as well. Okay? Very simple to do. All right, friends. So we're going to do, we're going to just go in straight down. And we're going to put... Very simple decoration, okay? Very simple decoration, friends. We're not going to get the thing too complicated. You see? So, and those kind of like are going to be portion. Very simple. And a child could do it. And then we'll put one in the middle? What do you think? Put one in the middle? No, let's not put one in the middle. It'll be easier to cut, otherwise it's going to get it all messed up. And then we take a raspberry, boom, boom. Do you think I'm going to do boom on all of them? No. <laughs> there you go, my friends. You see? Very simple. Did I tell you a child could do this? It can. You see? You can let the kids do this. Maybe you do the rosette, but let them do it. So here's what we're going to do, friends. Trust me, I'm going to cut into it. <laughs> I'm dying to eat it, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a couple of pictures of this just like this so we can use them as, for the thumbnail, maybe. I'm not really sure. I'm going to take a couple of pictures, and we'll be back because I'm going to cut a piece in it, okay? So we'll be back in a second when I'm ready to take a picture to cut it. Okay, friends, the moment I've been waiting for is to cut it. So I got a clean knife. <laughs> Always good to use a clean knife, friends. And I got a bucket of um, a container, bucket. In a restaurant business, we call it a bucket. Uh, uh, with hot water. So after I cut one time, I clean my knife, and I put it, or I put it in hot water, and I clean it. Or the other way around, whatever I'm gonna do, right? So I'm ready to go. I'm gonna cut it, my friends. You ready? Okay, I'm gonna cut it. So we're gonna go in the center, and we're going in, and you see the ganache is perfect. See, if you didn't put any cream, see right there, I can't go in with this knife right now. We see it messed up a little bit over there. I hate when I do that. Um, uh, I can't just go in there like this now. So I do this. I put a lot of water right there. And I clean the knife. So clean the knife every time. Because if you go with a dirty knife on the, on the second slice, and then you dry it. Because if you go with a dirty knife, you're going to have a dirty slice. <laughs> Dirty slice. I give you a lesson in uh, in English. If you go with a dirty knife, you're gonna have a dirty slice. Yeah. Hello. Go in straight through, straight through, and then we move the knife. We're keeping the water. We're only gonna take one slice, and then we're gonna go in, my friends, and we're gonna put it in, and we're gonna take it out. Oh yeah, look at this. Look at this. It almost looks like, friends, like a, like a chocolate mousse. Like a chocolate mousse. Look at that. Beautiful textures. It's going to be good, my friends. It's going to be good. We're going to put it. Oh, mamma mia. I'm going to go in there. Eh? 
I'm going to go right, holy moly, there you go. You can also serve with the cream anglaise recipe right there, English custard cream sauce, friends. I want to go in now, and we're going to take a slice right there. I'm going to eat it. Let me just move, move this side right there, friends. And look at that. See the ganache is perfect consistency, friends. Perfect, perfect. It's soft. So I remember, that's why you have to put a ganache and not just melt the chocolate on there. I wish the chocolate to be hard. Oh, excuse my fingers. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Mm. Oh yes. Mmm. Delicious. Mmm. The crust is perfect. Held together. Mmm. Beautiful. Mmm. When the English custard cream will be even better. Mmm. Friends, I hope you make this recipe. Hope you enjoyed it. Remember, thumbs up if you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell. We'll see you in the next few days with another fantastic video. Thanks for watching.